Hello everyone, got a few dirty jokes for you today. So last night on stage at the strip club was the ugliest dancer I've ever seen. She danced up to me and said, Hey handsome, what would you like me to take off first? I said my glasses. <laughs> so two little old ladies were attending a rather long church service. One leaned over and whispered, My butt is going to sleep. I know, replied her companion. I heard it snore three times. <laughs> so, after a fun night out, a young woman invited a new friend back to her place for a late night drink. Just one thing, she whispered. You can't make any noise. My parents are upstairs, and if they find out you're here, they'll kill us. They got cozy on the sofa, but after a while, the man felt nature calling. Ah, I really need to go, he said. Well, you can't go upstairs. The bathroom's right by my parents' room, she replied. Just use the kitchen sink. He hesitated, then nodded and headed to the kitchen. A few minutes later, he peeked back around the corner and whispered. Hey, uh... Do you have any toilet paper, or should I just use a paper towel? <laughs> so my wife managed to crash the car again today. When the police showed up, she was all fired up, insisting that the guy she hit was being totally reckless. He was on his phone. Can you believe it? She exclaimed. And to make matters worse, he was sitting there, casually, sipping on a can of beer. The officer, trying his best to hold back a smile, took a deep breath, looked her dead in the eye, and said, Look, he can do whatever he wants. In his own living room. <laughs> so I overheard my granddaughter Holly arguing with her friend about whose grandpa was better. My grandpa doesn't need a walking stick, Holly boasted. Yeah, well, my grandpa can still drive, her friend replied. Oh, yeah, Holly said as she puffed out her chest. Well, my grandpa doesn't even use glasses. Her friend shook her head and replied, that's not true. Yes, it is, Holly yelled back. He drinks straight from the bottle. <laughs> so a man comes out of the bathroom and says to his wife, Honey, I've just taken a dump that weighed three pounds. His wife curls her lip and replies, Oh, Carl, did you stand on the scales before and after going to the toilet? The husband responds, Oh, I guess I could have done it that way too. <laughs> So after being airborne for approximately 30 minutes on an outbound evening flight, the lead flight attendant for the cabin crew nervously made the following painful announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so very sorry, but it appears that there has been a terrible mix-up one minute prior to take off by our airport catering service. I don't know how this has happened, but we have 103 passengers on board and, unfortunately, only 40 dinner meals. I truly apologize for this mistake and inconvenience. When passengers' muttering had died down, she continued, anyone who is kind enough to give up their meal so that someone else can eat will receive free, unlimited drinks for the duration of our five-hour flight. Her next announcement came 90 minutes later. If anyone would like to change their minds, we still have 40 dinners available. <laughs> so one day, a woodcutter was chopping branches from a tree over a river when his axe slipped from his hands and splashed into the water below. Distraught, he cried out, and suddenly the Lord appeared. Why are you crying? The Lord asked. My axe fell into the river. The woodcutter replied. The Lord nodded went down into the water and emerged holding a golden axe. Is this your axe? He asked. The woodcutter shook his head. 
No, that's not mine. The Lord dove back under and returned with a silver axe. Is this your axe? He asked again. No, the woodcutter replied. Finally, the Lord brought up an old iron axe. Is this your axe? Yes, said the woodcutter, relieved. The Lord was pleased with the man's honesty and gave him all three axes as a reward. The woodcutter happily went home with his new treasure. Sometime later, the woodcutter was walking by the river with his wife when she slipped and fell in. He cried out in distress, and once again the Lord appeared. Why are you crying? Asked the Lord. Oh, Lord, my wife has fallen into the river. The Lord went down into the water and reappeared holding Jennifer Lopez. Is this your wife? He asked. Yes, yes, my Lord. The woodcutter shouted without hesitation. The Lord was furious. You liar. That's not your wife. Please forgive me, my Lord, the woodcutter explained. You see, if I said no to Jennifer Lopez, you'd come up with Catherine Zeta-Jones next. Then, if I said no to her, you'd finally bring up my wife, and I'd say yes, and you'd give me all three. But Lord, I'm just a poor woodcutter. I can barely take care of one wife, let alone three. So this time, I thought it best to just say yes right away. <laughs> so, George W. Bush is tossing and turning in bed one night when he suddenly wakes up to find the ghost of George Washington standing beside him. Surprised, Bush asks, George, what's the best thing I can do to help the country? Washington replies, set an honest and honorable example, just as I did. Then he fades away. The next night, Bush is restless again only to see the ghost of Thomas Jefferson drifting through the room. Bush calls out, Tom, please. What's the best thing I can do to help the country? Jefferson answers, respect the Constitution, as I did. And then he disappears. On the third night, Bush wakes to find Franklin D. Roosevelt's ghost hovering by his bed. Bush whispers, Franklin, what's the best thing I can do to help the country? Roosevelt responds, help the less fortunate, just as I did, and he vanishes into the mist. By the fourth night, Bush is barely sleeping when he notices another figure in the shadows. It's the ghost of Abraham Lincoln. Desperate, Bush pleads. Abe, what's the best thing I can do right now to help the country? Lincoln looks at him and says, go see a play. <laughs> So a blonde was trying to sell her old car, but she was having trouble because it had nearly 230,000 miles on it. One day at the salon, she mentioned her problem to her brunette co-worker, who said, I know a way to make the car easier to sell, but it's a little shady. The blonde shrugged, I don't care, as long as I can sell it. The brunette nodded and said, all right. Here's the address of a friend who owns a car repair shop. Tell him I sent you, and he'll fix it for you. After that, selling it should be no problem. The blonde went to see the mechanic that weekend, and he rolled back the odometer of her car back to 50,000 miles. About a month later, the brunette asked, So, did you manage to sell your car? The blonde grinned. Are you kidding? Why would I sell it? It only has 50,000 miles on it now. <laughs> so two lifelong friends, Patrick Murphy and Sean O'Brien, grew up together, thick as thieves. Sadly, Patrick developed cancer and was nearing the end. While lying on his deathbed, Patrick called his buddy over. Sean, come here. I have a request for you. Sean knelt beside him, choking up. Anything, Patrick, just name it. Under my bed, 
Patrick began, is a bottle of the finest whiskey in all of Ireland. Bottled the year I was born, when I'm gone and they lay me in the ground. I want you to pour that whiskey over my grave so it can soak into my bones and I'll be able to enjoy it for all eternity. Sean wiped a tear, deeply moved by the request. Ah, Patrick, it's a beautiful thing, you ask. And I'll do it, I swear. He paused, then added, Would you mind if I strain it through my kidneys first? <laughs> so a carpet layer had just finished installing carpet for a woman when he stepped outside for a smoke, only to realize he'd lost his pack of cigarettes. Back inside, he noticed a small bump in the middle of the carpet. No sense pulling up the whole floor for one pack of smokes, he thought. So, he grabbed his hammer and flattened the bump until it was perfectly smooth. Just as he finished, the woman walked in, holding his cigarettes. I found these in the hallway, she said with a smile. Now, if only I could find my hamster. <laughs> So one day, an Irishman is walking through the forest when he stumbles upon a leprechaun stuck in a tree. The leprechaun pleads with him to help, but the Irishman just shakes his head and says no. Finally, the leprechaun says, if you get me out, I'll grant you two wishes. The Irishman thinks it over and agrees. After freeing the leprechaun, he says, all right, for my first wish, I want a cup that automatically refills with whiskey every time I finish it. Poof. Just like that, a cup appears on a tree stump. The Irishman picks it up, takes a sip, and sure enough, as soon as he empties it, it magically refills. Delighted, he drinks it down again, and again, and again. Finally, the leprechaun clears his throat and says, uh... You still have one more wish. The now very tipsy Irishman turns to him and slurs. I'll take another one of these. <laughs> so a group of girlfriends is on vacation when they spot a five-story hotel with a sign that says, For women only. Since they're without their boyfriends or husbands, they decide to check it out. At the entrance, a very attractive bouncer explains how it works. We have five floors. You can go up one floor at a time, and if you find what you're looking for, you can stay there. Each floor has a sign that tells you what's inside. Excited, they start going up. On the first floor, the sign reads, all the men on this floor are short and plain. They laugh and quickly move on to the next floor. The second floor sign says, All the men here are short and handsome. Still not satisfied, the friends continue up. On the third floor, the sign reads, All the men here are tall and plain. They're still not impressed, so they head up to the fourth floor. There, the sign is perfect. All the men here are tall and handsome. The women are thrilled and are about to go in when they realize there's still one floor left. Curious, they decide to check it out. On the fifth floor, they find a sign that reads, There are no men here. This floor was built only to prove that there's no way to please a woman. <laughs> so an Irishman, an American, and a Japanese man are sitting in a sauna, chatting away, when suddenly a buzzing sound comes from the American. He stands up and says, I'll be right back. The Irishman and the Japanese man exchange puzzled looks. A moment later, the American returns and says, Isn't technology amazing? That buzzing sound you heard was my pager. It's built right into my arm. The Irishman is a bit stunned. A few minutes later, a ringing sound comes from the Japanese man. He says, excuse me for a moment, and steps out. When he returns, he says, isn't technology wonderful? I have a cell phone built right into my hand. The speaker is in my hand, 
and the earpiece is in my shoulder. Well, that's enough for the Irishman. He stands up and says, right, I'll be back in a second. He walks out of the sauna. A couple of minutes later, he strolls back in with a long trail of toilet paper hanging out from his backside. The American and the Japanese man stare, baffled. The Irishman looks at them and says, Oh, don't mind me. I'm receiving a fax. <laughs> so a guy on trial for murder decides to bribe a blonde juror to avoid the death penalty. He offers her $10,000 if she'll push for a manslaughter conviction. She agrees. Days later, the jury returns a guilty verdict for manslaughter, and he's sent to prison. Using his one phone call, he contacts the blonde juror. Thank you so much for saving me, he says, relieved. No problem, she replies. But it wasn't easy. Everyone else wanted to acquit you. <laughs> so one day, a truck driver was driving along when he spotted a priest hitchhiking by the roadside, feeling generous. He pulled over and asked, Where are you headed, Father? I'm going to the church, about five miles down the road, replied the priest. No problem, Father. Hop in, I'll take you there. The priest climbed into the passenger seat, and the truck driver continued on his way. A little while later, the driver saw a lawyer walking along the road. Instinctively, he swerved to hit him but then remembered he had a priest sitting beside him. At the last moment, he swerved back, barely missing the lawyer. Despite swerving, he still heard a loud bump. Confused, he checked his mirrors, but didn't see anything. Turning to the priest, he said, I'm so sorry, Father. I almost hit that lawyer. The priest gave a small smile and replied, That's all right, I got him with the door. <laughs> <laughs> so Reverend John Fluff was the pastor of a small town in Ireland. One day, he was walking down the high street when he noticed a young woman from his congregation, Miss Fitzgerald, sitting in a pub drinking beer. The Reverend wasn't pleased. He walked through the open door, sat down beside her and said sternly, Miss Fitzgerald, this is no place for a member of my congregation. Why don't you let me take you home? Sure, she replied with a slur, clearly very drunk. As she stood up, she began to sway unsteadily, realizing she'd had far too much. The reverend reached out to steady her, but they both lost their balance and tumbled to the floor. After a moment of scrambling, the reverend ended up on top of Miss Fitzgerald. Her skirt hiked up around her waist. The pub landlord looked over and shouted, Oi, mate, we don't allow that sort of behavior in here. The reverend looked up and said, You don't understand. I'm Pastor Fluff. The landlord shrugged and replied, Well, if you're that far in, you might as well finish. <laughs> So in a classroom, a teacher had an amusing idea for a quiz and gathered her students around. The teacher inquired, can anyone guess which animal possesses both a beak and feathers? A random student eagerly raised their hand and confidently responded, a duck. With a chuckle, the teacher replied, indeed, you're correct. However, it could also be a goose. Moving on to the next question. Which animal has both claws and fur? Another student quickly answered, a dog. The teacher nodded, impressed, and added, absolutely right. Yet, let's not forget, it could also be a cat. Just when the quiz seemed to be coming to a close, little Johnny stepped forward. Now facing the teacher directly, the boy exclaimed, Teacher, I have a question for you. Curios, the teacher smiled and responded, certainly go ahead. Little Johnny paused for a moment, contemplating his question before finally asking, can you identify this mysterious object? 
It starts off as long, hard, and dry. But once inserted into something warm and soft, it becomes soft, short, and delightfully wet. Without a second thought, the Tichi smacked the little Johnny, causing a surprised gasp from the students. However, undeterred, little Johnny smiled as he exclaimed, You got it. But hey, it could have easily been a chewing gum. <laughs> so as a guy walked down the street, he couldn't help but feel guilty. He had done something terrible, and he knew that he needed to confess his sins to a priest. He had never been to confession before, but he knew that it was the right thing to do. He approached the confessional booth and knelt down, feeling a wave of shame wash over him. Father, forgive me, for I have sinned, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. The priest on the other side of the screen spoke softly. What is your sin, my child? The man hesitated for a moment before blurting out the truth. Three days ago, my mother-in-law was helping me move some stuff around, and it started to rain. She stayed the night, and we slept together. The priest looked shocked, but composed himself quickly. Give three Hail Marys for this, he said firmly. The man took a deep breath and repeated the prayer as he had been instructed, but he knew that he had more to confess. Father, forgive me, for I have sinned, he said again. The priest responded, What is your sin this time, my child? Two days ago, I was helping my sister-in-law move, and it started to rain. I stayed the night, and we slept together, the man said, feeling the weight of his guilt. The priest was taken aback. Give six Hail Marys for this, he said sternly. The man repeated the prayer again and then took another deep breath. Father, forgive me for I have sinned, he said once more. The priest let out a heavy sigh. What is your sin this time, my child? Yesterday, my brother-in-law was helping me unpack some stuff and it started to rain. He stayed the night, and we slept together, the man admitted, feeling the shame wash over him once again. At this, the priest stood up and looked out the window. The man was confused. Father, what are you doing? He asked. The priest turned to him, his expression grim. It's starting to get cloudy, she said. Get the hell out of here before it starts raining. <laughs> So John asks his wife, Mary, what she wants to celebrate their 40 years wedding anniversary. Would you like a new mink coat? He asks. Not really, says Mary. Well, how about a new Mercedes sports car? Says John. No, she responds. Would some beautiful new jewelry do the trick? He asks, becoming slightly exasperated. Nah, she shrugs. What about a new vacation home in the country? He persists. She again rejects his offer with a no thanks. Well, what would you like? John asks. I want a divorce. Answers, Mary. Sorry, sighed John. I wasn't planning on spending that much. <laughs> so... A French monk wrote a book stating that every woman would agree to sell her body for money. The book was read by the Queen of France, and she invited the monk for a chat. She asked him, So, you genuinely believe that every woman, including myself, would sell her body for money? With unwavering conviction, the monk replied, Yes, your majesty, I do. The Queen with a hint of playful curiosity, continued even me. The monk, without hesitation, nodded and said, Certainly, even you, your majesty. Pretending to be genuinely intrigued, the queen leaned in and asked, And pray tell, how much do you think I would be worth in this marketplace of yours? The monk, with a sly smile, quipped, I believe, your Majesty, that you would be valued at 500 francs. 
The queen, feigning outrage, exclaimed, 500 francs? Is that all you think I'm worth? The monk calmly responded, Your majesty, you've already proven my point. You see, you've begun to negotiate. <laughs> so a married couple on a tight budget were shopping in a supermarket. The husband picks up a case of beer and places it in their shopping cart. The wife complained, put that back. We only have enough funds for essential items, not luxuries such as beer costing $20. A little later, while walking through the cosmetics aisle, the wife picks up a beauty cream and places it in the cart. The husband says, I thought we were on a tight budget, buying only essential items, right? The wife responds, this item is essential. It makes me look beautiful. Well, says the husband, the beer also makes you look beautiful, and it's half the price of the cream. <laughs> so two women walk into a bar. They notice a group of younger women standing around a table in the corner. They begin to wonder aloud who might be seated at the table. Finally, the crowd begins to disperse. They see a frail man who appears to be in his 80s in the booth. On either side of him sits a girl who barely looks old enough to be in the bar. One of the women turns and asks the bartender, what's the deal with the old guy? Is he someone famous? The bartender replies, I'm not sure who he is. He started showing up a couple weeks ago. He just orders a beer, sits down in that corner booth, and starts licking his eyebrows. <laughs> so while sports fishing off the Florida coast in Key West, a tourist capsized his boat. He could swim, but his fear of alligators kept him clinging to the overturned craft. Spotting an old beachcomber walking on the shore, the tourist shouted, there wouldn't by chance be any alligators in these waters. He asks in panic, no. The old man hollered back, haven't been any for years. Feeling relieved, the tourists started swimming leisurely toward the shore. About halfway toward shore, he asked the old man, say, how'd you get rid of the gators anyway? We didn't do anything, the old man said. The sharks got them. <laughs> so did you know that even though polar bears are carnivores, they actually enjoy peas as a treat? Well, here's the trick to catching one. First, go out onto the ice pack and cut a nice big hole in the ice. Then, sprinkle peas all around the edge of the hole. Now, here's the tricky part. When the polar bear stops to take a pea, you kick him right in the ice hole. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs>